Wow. That is very good looking. I don't, I don't know if this works, but just the graphical aesthetic of this is very, very well done. Use WS or up and down arrows to move your paddle. So today's video is going to be somewhat related to the previous video I posted where we had taken a look at Thud M's GLM 432 b 414 And for today's video, we're basically going to be taking a look at the 9 billion parameter variant of that model family, if you will. So for today's video, I basically wanted to just kind of do somewhat similar testing to what we did in the previous video, except with the 9 billion parameter variant of this model. I was, of course, pretty impressed with some of the aesthetic and UI UX design capabilities of the previous model. So so basically, I want to just test this and see how it stacks up. Now, for today's video, I would like to make note of a couple of things. First and foremost is that if we scroll all the way down here into the actual Hugging Face page for some of this family of model, the GLM-4014 model, we can see that they mentioned GLM-Z19B. Now, the Z1 designation seems to refer to a chain of thought or reasoning model, so basically it will think and you can see its actual chain of thought. The model I am using here is not the Z model. So from my understanding, and I do believe this is correct, this model will not do any reasoning or chain of thought. So like the previous model that we tested, which was the non Z132B model, it will basically just spit out the answer immediately after getting the user's query, which I do kind of like because it's quicker and things like that. For more technical stuff, just to kind of get that out of the way, I am using the Bartowski quantization of this model right here in LM Studio. It is all set and loaded. The machine I am using right now is a dual 3090 Ti machine. I am using the 8-bit quant here, which we can see is a download size of around 10 gigabytes. And basically, I find that this is worth testing because it's definitely more accessible. So if you have a 16 gigabyte video card or something like that, you can definitely run this at an 8-bit quant. And if you had, say, a 12 gig 3060 or something like that, you would probably have good luck with a 6-bit, definitely with a 4-bit or things like that. So this is just kind of more accessible on resource-constrained scenarios, as they mentioned right here in the Hugging Face page. So with that, I do have it loaded right here in LM Studio. To quickly go through my settings, we can just basically take a peek right here. So I did not change that. I am just going to drag the context length up to some arbitrary number over 10,000. I am going to turn flash attention on and reload to apply changes. In addition to that, um, a user uh, on a previous video had posted that if you actually change these model loading guardrails from what they are in the default, which I think was strict or balanced to relaxed or off, you may get faster generation speed. So I have also gone ahead and done that. With that, we can see that the model loaded with all of these specific settings is using 6.6 .6 gigs on card zero and 6.4 on card one. So that is around 13 gigs of VRAM that it's using right now. And again, the dual 3090 Ti system. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and just do some testing akin to what we did in the last video. I am asking it again using Python with no external dependencies, generate a retro synthwave style game. I did this previously, and again, it is responding in the exact same way where it's basically saying this is quite an extensive task, but I can give you a simple example. That is not something I've seen any model do prior to this, saying this is very difficult, but here's a simple example. Usually they just say here's like a brief implementation, so I'm not sure what to make of that behavior. Ooh. All right, so I did not read the instructions right here, so I don't really know what's going on. So we're going to just go ahead and Steve's PC repair man. You are now in the city. You're in a neon lit cityscape. The air is electric with energy. What would you like to do? Explore or search? Let's explore. I discover a hidden neon sign. My score is now 10. What would I like to do? I'd like to search. I found an ancient map. My health is now 92. So I would assume my health was starting at 100. So the ancient map seems to have um, had a, a, I don't know. Ooh, good. All right. I think, I'm assuming every time I, okay, I think, <laughs> I think explore just, oh, I found a mysterious package. <laughs> My score is now 40. Let's search. Ooh, vintage synthesizer part. Your health is now 86. So when I find things, I get hurt. What happens if I 
if I die. Oh, okay. That doesn't seem to matter. Very good. I'm wondering if the synthwave style, because it was synthwave record, synthesizer parts. All right, it may have literally taken synth, but this is quite interesting. I don't really know what to make of this. It did more of like a role-playing adventure text-based game, which is not bad. I'm not even trying the synthwave test anymore as I just want to kind of go ahead and see if this will work at all, making a simple Python game using graphical elements. It did do a kind of text-based adventure, if you will, that we saw previously. So I want to just see if there will be anything graphically that it can do. This was around 64.5 tokens per second. It is just telling us first and foremost that we need to install Pygame. You can see right there a previous attempt of the synthwave game using Pygame, which just kept failing. So there was kind of no point in showing that. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and, oh, okay. All right, so I do have to say that this is basically the third time I've tested this just doing anything with Pygame, and it has failed each time. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to say that this is likely not equipped with a coding strong suit, if you will. With that, let's go and do my favorite thing, which is the Steve's PC Repair HTML website. All right, I've just asked it using a sim single HTML script, generate a beautiful website for Steve's PC Repair, which is, we all know, our favorite local PC repairman by the name of Steve Johnson, um, as of our last iteration of this website. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and basically see what we're doing right here. Okay, so again, something I noticed last time that this does seem to be doing again is it will actually use images in the websites it creates, which is quite interesting and really does kind of add to the quality look of these websites, assuming that the images in this specific implementation will actually work. It is complete. I have not really looked at any of the code, so I don't know what it will look like, how it will work. That was 62 tokens per second, 6,587 tokens. And we're basically gonna scroll all the way up, copy paste this into an HTML file, and go ahead and hope that it has generated Steve, our favorite local PC repairman, a quality, aesthetically pleasing website. All right. Ooh, oh, oh, look at that. Is that, okay, it's a sand dune, it's not the pyramids. Um, not that I thought it was the pyramids. <laughs> okay, so this looks quite similar in some ways to the 32B variant one, such as something like this. To be honest with you, this is again quite good. It did a fantastic job with the footer right here. I do believe I saw 123 Tech Street in the previous iteration that the 32B model of this had done as well. It did do 2023 Steve's PC repair. All right, let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the things that it made up for us. So first and foremost, this looks quite good. I, I think that's interesting that it differentiated that in kind of an orange weird color. Nice touch. We do PC diagnostics. I'm not quite sure why this looks like a picture of Lower Manhattan. I, I don't know how that relates, but <laughs> software installation and support. Again, this looks like a very rocky beach and hardware repairs of the Eiffel Tower. So <laughs> not necessarily uh, related pictures, but again, it did put pictures and it could have not. So I can't knock it too much. Steve has over 10 years of experience in computer repair and maintenance. We have a team of certified techs, friendly service, Okay, it, I don't see an origin story here, which I saw before in one of these and it was quite funny. All right, let's see. So again, okay, good picture. I was in a panic when my laptop, oh, hey, stop scrolling. Completely crashed, Steve's PC repair saved the day. <laughs> Sarah J, business owner, incredibly helpful. We upgraded this guy's computer to a new OS. Yep, we put Windows Vista on there for him. I've been bringing my work laptop here for years. Yep, we stole all your company's proprietary data, pal. No, I'm <laughs> Jessica P, marketing exec. Prices are fair. We're never pushy. All right, let's see uh, services. And again, these just kind of link to the blob on the page. I don't know if that's called a blob, so please correct me if it isn't, but these just link to the blob on the page where you would then kind of go to click with those. Since 2014, so we're a fairly new business. We have our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, and our LinkedIn. Again, I mean, even just look at the way these kind of react when you hover over them. Really, this is, I mean, this is a 9 billion parameter model at a Q8 quantization. And this is really quite a satisfactory result, I would say, for really one-shot generation. 
All right, I'm asking it to generate an SVG of a micro center store, but during Black Friday, okay, it does actually know what Black Friday is, which is cool. For those of you who are maybe not um, US based or familiar, Black Friday is like the Friday after Thanksgiving where stores um, usually have very aggressive deals on things. So people usually go overnight and line up. Uh, a lot of times it can get somewhat rowdy. Ooh. Oh, well. Again, I don't know what the limitations of SVGs and things are, so perhaps this was a lot to give it. It did correctly do a lot of what I specified in terms of the denotion of Black Friday, where it has the 50% off sale signs here. I would assume these are kind of maybe holiday themed style things because Black Friday does fall in late November, so that would be the holiday season. Micro Center is correctly listed here. The Tech Guru sounds like sounds like Steve's PC repair. And then there's a green sale sign here. I'm not quite sure what, what these things are right here, but okay. So, all right. So it seems like this is our store. That's maybe a, uh, like the, the shade over the, all right. Again, uh, I want to try it with programming again. Now, someone had asked or suggested that I should try the game design tests in JS or JavaScript instead. So I am going to ask it that. And okay, so just like it did with the original ones where I was testing it with Python here, where it starts out by saying this is an extensive project beyond the scope of this platform. And then it just kind of says, okay, here's how you're going to do this. Here's what you need to do. All right, so it, it did do that and it did a quite decent job. Obviously, I'm speaking beyond the actual graphical elements here and the complexity or lack thereof of the game it made, but essentially it did go ahead and not only give us the instructions on how to get this set up and running. So if you were someone who had no idea about like setting up this simple JS script and a local little like HTML file to host the game, what it says right here this would have properly guided you through that 100% and you would have actually had the exact functional thing that we see right here in Firefox where it is a green rectangle just bouncing around the screen. So that is actually quite a decent result and this is something that I suppose if you were in a resource constrained environment and you had this model offline, you could then kind of take what it gave you here and then mold it a little, make it more complex and kind of learn as you go. I will say that one, I don't recall by name who suggested uh, trying this with JS JavaScript, but that is a great suggestion because this was very interesting and not something that I would have otherwise thought to do. I wonder if I can make it a little more. I want to. All right. Now I'm getting excited. <laughs> all right. So now we're going to try a Pong game. So we can see right here that asking it to turn that simple example into a Pong game, it has generated a significantly increased amount of code, which can be good or bad depending on whether or not it works. So we're basically just going to go ahead and do the exact same thing that it kind of told us to do before to get this running. And all we need to do right here is just replace the files that we had already. And let's just basically go ahead and now with the modified files, run this and see if the website is actually functional. Wow. That is very good looking. I don't, I don't know if this works, but just the graphical aesthetic of this is very, very well done. Use WS or up and down arrows to move your paddle. Oh, wow. Look at the way it, uh, oh, <laughs> I just smoked the AI there. Okay, so the, the right side of the screen is the AI, and look at... I'm sorry, I should be saying more, but look at the actual effect, like the splash effect when the ball hits the, the paddles. This is really not bad. <laughs> and, and remember, this isn't just like a simple Python script that I had a code where it did this. It also needed to kind of generate the web, the HTML file along with the game.js file. This is really good. The score is being kept. I'm actually, <laughs> honestly, I'm kind of enjoying this. And the way that the background actually flashes green when the ball bounces against the bounds of the thing. And the score did update there properly. I don't know because I didn't really look through the code if there was any actual like max score or who wins, who loses. So I will probably just let the AI win right now. And then we'll see uh, 
like what the score runs up to before it ends the game or if it does or if it doesn't. But again, that is one, a fantastic test. So thank you for that suggestion because that is really quite cool. And two, I think that was very well done. So it's very interesting because we had it try to generate pretty simple Python games that would kind of necessitate a much smaller amount of code than what we get here. And they failed with simple errors that likely would be surprising to see happen. But then it just went ahead and did all this and it did a fantastic job on this. So again, this model seems very well poised to do web-based things, just HTML sites or things like this, where it's a site in addition to that, there's some like game logic above it, things like that. I am extremely impressed with that result to the point where I will just kind of launch it one more time because the even just the start screen right here was awesome. And the way the background goes like lime green when the ball hits it. Okay, well, that's... And the animations when the splashes against the paddle. Sorry, I'm probably spending too much time on this result, but this is really quite decent. I'm impressed with this. I really am quite impressed with this. And that's around 11 gigs of video RAM that it generated that that entire result. And remember, this is something that it wasn't a one shot prompt here. We initially asked it to use a simple JS script to generate a retro synth wave game. It originally just made a rectangular box bouncing back and forth. Then we asked it to make this into a Pong game and then it generated all of this. So total there was 62 tokens per second. It generated 3,248 tokens. And that was a fantastic result, truly. Um, in a test that I've not done before, so I can't speak to comps, but I will do this again. So that is going to conclude just a quick test of this model. I wanted to test the 9 billion parameter variant because the 32 billion parameter variant excelled massively in kind of UX UI design with the web design things and things like that. This model also did a very good job. Again, I want to reiterate two things. One, this is running on a dual 3090 Ti system currently using a bit over 13 gigs of VRAM. This is an 8-bit quant version of the non-reasoning GLM-4-9B0414 model. It did generate this website. It did a great job. It had a nice footer. It had the kind of fake testimonials and things like that. All the kind of general things. Python-wise, it did not do a very good job. A lot of simple mistakes and things that you otherwise wouldn't have really expected. However, Making a JavaScript game with a little simple kind of web local server to actually run it was by far the most impressive result that I saw from this model in testing it today. To sum up this model, it does seem very similar to its big brother or the 32 billion parameter variant that we had previously tested, where aesthetically it is really fantastic. They don't seem great when it comes to Python coding and things like that, but web design tasks, they seemingly excel at massively. I can't speak so much to creative writing or anything like that, but for web-based or yeah, web-based coding tasks, very well done. With that, that is going to wrap up this video. I wanted to just test this model because the 32B1 was so unique and impressive in aspects. I will say that this model is as well. With that, that is going to conclude today's video. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching.